up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Friday Night Supper Club. I'm Sarah Lynn. And I'm Alicia. And as you know, every single Friday, we like to get together and try out a challenging recipe. And tonight, of course, we've got our work cut out for us because we are going to be tackling the fancy French entree, the souffle au fromage from Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking. So we are going to make a classic cheese souffle, which yes. is incredible since we're both huge cheese enthusiasts, in case you haven't heard. But if you do want to see the chocolate variation, if this goes well, <laughs> let us know and maybe we can do it. So without further ado, let's get this party started. All right, so to get started, we have preheated our oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna get started by buttering up this souffle dish. And I am grating some Gruyere cheese. So you can really use anything, but they suggest a good quality Swiss, and I love Gruyere. And then what we are going to do to give your souffle something to hang on to as it sort of climbs and lifts, because that's the idea here, your souffle is going to lift up and out of your dish. You want to give it something texture to hold on to, so a great technique suggested by Julia is to add some grated Parmesan cheese into your bowl. Once you've got your Parmesan into your dish, you can either use your hands and sort of get it up the sides, because you want to make sure it is well cheesed all over, or you can do what Alton Brown suggests, of mm -hmm. course, Alton Brown being a kitchen genius. You basically just take a sheet of plastic wrap, put it on your souffle dish, and then you shake until everything is sort of coated. Alicia and I actually had to do a little bit of research last night. A so lot we of watched research. Julia Child making the souffle, She's and then we watched so the good. good Eats version. Alton does his souffle very differently. That is true. Than Julia Child, so. We learned some tips, but we're mostly listening to Julia for it, this one. So we are gonna get started on our bechamel. Yes. Uh, we have made bechamel once in the past <laughs> together when we made a homemade lasagna. Always an interesting adventure. It actually went really, really well. Everyone that ate that lasagna said it was the, the best, best lasagna ever to eat. It was so good. <laughs> But anyway, so you're getting started on the base of the bechamel. I am separating some eggs because we need both the yolks and the whites for this recipe, but oh, sh <laughs> nice. All great bechamels start with a roux, which is basically a combination of butter and flour all sort of mixed together. You want to start by melting your butter. And you don't want to add your flour too early because what we learned last night from our good friend Alton mm -hmm. Brown on Good Eats is that butter is like seven to eight percent water. So you need to burn the water off before you add your flour and that's how you get a perfect roux. So Julia's recipe calls for two and a half tablespoons of butter to three tablespoons of flour. Those are very specific measurements, but we're not gonna mess with her. And then you just whisk them together like so. You want to get the flour all integrated before you add anything else. And you'll know you're sort of reaching the promised land when your mixture starts to get a touch bit darker and you're going to smell sort of a nuttiness sort of coming together. And that mm. means it is time to add the milk. You, you want to add your hot milk all at once. I'm just going to step back. That's how accidents happen in the kitchen. And then you whisk, 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 Use the whisk, 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 whisk. <gasps> Look at it. It's getting all thick and delicious. You want your cayenne in there? And then you need a little nutmeg, and then some salt. All right, so the bechamel base is off the heat, and now we can add in our egg yolks one at a time. One at a time, and you wanna keep on whisking them quickly so they don't start to scramble. It is a two-person job, <laughs> unless you're Julia. But it's looking really good. All signs point to this being the better way. Yeah, no, it is. So now that my arm is burning sufficiently, <laughs> Um, and this is looking really beautiful and pale yellow and very mm -hmm. velvety. We're just gonna transfer this into a large mixing bowl, cover it, and then we're gonna get to work on our egg whites. And so this is one thing that Alton does differently. He actually adds the cheese in now and melts it into the base of the bechamel, which Julia Child says you should not do because it makes a heavier yes. uh, final souffle. So she doesn't add it until later, which was a very interesting difference. So it's very common when you're making a mixture like this for this sort of film to grow on top. We don't want that to happen. So we're just gonna let this cool. You could use plastic wrap. Julia Child uses a little bit of butter actually, but we're gonna use this pretty quickly. So I think we'll get away with it. Okay, so your beautiful egg whites, all five of them are hanging out. No yolk, 
No. Nope. So that's no yolk. No yolk. Um, I've seen this done with cream of tartar, but in the book it says salt. Yep. Yep. So we're just gonna follow her instructions. She also suggests either a glass or copper bowl. You could do this with a stand mixer or if you're feeling like a real hero. By hand? Go ahead yeah, and do right. it by hand. Yeah, right. Don't even bother. So we've read that a lot of recipes use soft peaks. But Julia Child's recipe calls for stiff, and when you watch her make it, they're pretty stiff, like nothing is falling off of the spoon. So we're gonna go with stiff today. For sure. I'm not sure we're getting seven times the volume, but I think that's as much volume as we're gonna get out of these beauties. I think that's pretty good. This is the exciting part where the two pieces come together. I'm gonna start by spooning about a quarter of our egg mixture into your mixture. We wanna start to lighten it up before we add the rest, and we're gonna add the cheese in between. And the secret is just a gentle fold, right? Because yes. we've worked so hard to get air into these egg whites, it would be heartbreaking. Yeah, you don't wanna over mix for sure, although I must say Julia seemed a little bit aggressive on the <laughs> video, so she just knows what she's doing, though. I'm not gonna risk it. All right, I think that this is good. What do you think? Uh, that looks good. And then add the cheese all but a few tablespoons so we can save a little bit for the top. Mm -hmm. And a little and bit for me. Snacking. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're ready to throw the rest in there. Is it all at once? I think it's all at once. All right, let's do it. Just to be clear, while we both host cooking channels, neither of us are trained chefs. I think, no. I think that's probably We don't know what we're clear. doing. We're making it up as we go. We're food enthusiasts. We like to more eat. Than experts. Yes. Yeah. I am doing an excellent job watching. Feel really good about it. Well, Having a sip of my wine. Take a drink for me. In it goes. What, what do you think of the Parmesan dusting job in this bowl? It's pretty serious, eh? I think it's great because I love a crispy edge. Mm. Things are looking fairly promising so far, everyone. Now we want to sprinkle the rest of this cheese on top. Just before we get this puppy into the oven, uh, we are going to create what is called a collar. Now, I think at fancy kitchen stores you can actually buy these, but since you can make them with a really inexpensive sheet of Is it called a collar or a oil, cuff? It's called a collar. Oh. Because it's a, a collar okay. around your uh, right. dish. So you basically are just trying to create a wall for your souffle to sort of sit within because it's going to hopefully, if we did it right, rise. rise above. And we don't want, when it rises, it to fall over because it's gonna be really soft at first before it sets. So when it rises, we're almost just giving it some extra space to keep it contained in a nice cylindrical shape. What is hysterical about the entire thing, we were watching last night, yes, is that she, Julia Child, uses pins to secure the collar, which makes a lot of sense. Totally makes sense, but I don't have any of those lying around. <laughs> we realize that we're not as domestic as we think, because neither of us had like an actual like sewing needle or anything to sort of secure this with. I think I have like a travel sewing kit somewhere. Right. Like I've taken one from a hotel, but that's probably it. Well, and in fairness, the pins in there maybe have those little plastic edges, but you wouldn't Oh yeah, I do have, have like a sewing pin, but it has the plastic ball on the end. Which would be bad news there if it yeah. happened. So we're going with a paper clip today, just a regular metal paper clip. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. <laughs> we'll see. And so Sarah Lynn just buttered down uh, the collar so that when it rises, it's like a greased pan and won't stick. Then we just wrap this beauty around. Try to keep it as cylindrical as possible. <laughs> but then you improvise with metal safety pins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's gonna work. I'm pretty excited about it. Now the book says it's supposed to be three quarters of the way up the dish, and I feel like maybe yeah. we're just shy of that. It but. says it could go up to three inches higher. So the souffle is in the oven. We've turned it down to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna let it go for at least 20 minutes before we start to peek at it. That is going to be oh, challenging. The suspense. Because you kind of can't see over that collar right? through the oven door. And so. I've, I've always read that you're not supposed to peek at a souffle at all, but Julia says after 20 minutes it's fine. 
Yeah, I didn't feel like that was a particularly good idea. We will resist yeah. the urge, and then I think it's between 30 and 45 minutes, just depending on how brown you want the top. Yeah, it might vary by oven, by temperature a little bit, so. Well, thank God there's cheese mm -hmm. and grapes. To keep us occupied. And olives. In we come. Oh my gosh, 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 oh my gosh. grab this? Yeah. <gasps> we didn't think it was gonna it be It looks so pretty. Can I sprinkle some of this? Uh, Parsley. Please. Okay, so honestly, up to like seven or eight minutes ago, it hadn't even It was still past. below, like an inch below. And then all of a sudden, I think I failed to mention is that I have never in my life eaten a souffle. So I'm not only excited that it worked out, but I'm excited that we get to try it. <gasps> Look how beautiful and it's so fluffy light. and light and delicious that looks. All right. Oh my gosh. It looks like the most billowy, pillowy scrambled eggs you've ever had, but with a cheesy crust on top. What is that? To oh. And that look at bite. the crust on the edge. Holy smokes. That Parmesan crust. And you can smell the parm the moment you dig into that. Wow. <gasps> the absolute oh. best part about this show. I've been is waiting to eat. for this moment. Wow. It's so light. It could not be unsaid. That is one of the cheesiest things I've actually it's ever It's really eaten. cheesy. The Parmesan on the side. I mean, you can still see it on the edge of the dish, but that's what all the browning on the side is. Mm. It gives it this great crisp, and the souffle part is like a pillow of an egg. That is just- Of like a Gruyere egg. Umami madness in there. Mm. And you can even see cheese stretch. Maybe there's a couple things I never expected. Being a first oh, time can. souffle eater, you can like, I never expected the cheese to still be stretchable. Guys, we insist you give this tastiness a try. Mm -hmm. Julia Child would not have it any mm -hmm. other way. We will definitely link the recipe in the description box below and also the hilarious video. You have to check it out. <laughs> definitely watch it before you make your own because it gives a lot of good pointers, mm -hmm. but it's also hilarious to watch Julia. Thank you souffle. for joining so us So funny. I feel inspired enough to try a sweet souffle after this. Oh, I'm ready. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can have lots more Friday Night Supper Club in your life. And if you guys start your own Friday Night Supper Club, don't forget to send us some photos of your amazing creations because of course we want to see them. Yes, tag us on social. All right, we'll see you next week and have a great weekend. I'm gonna have a little bit more. So great. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mm -hmm.